Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday Live. I'm sorry I had to miss last week. I missed you guys. And um, I am going to go over a few things that I've recently purchased before I get started on the makeup to give people time to come in and settle in. And yeah, so we're just going to go over a little bit of a haul. If you've been around for a little while, you may know, and if you haven't, then you won't, that I have been on a low buy for the beginning of the year. This is the third year that I have done this from January 1st until April 1st. It is a low buy, not a no buy because I do have a channel. And so if something really interesting comes along that I want to review for you guys, then I will do that. But I, it has to be something that I just really, really, really want to do. Otherwise, I, postp I postpone my buying and wait until April 1st, which is my birthday month. And then I allow myself to not go crazy, but buy a little bit more. So I stocked up on a couple of things today that I'm out of. And um, so I'm going to share those first and then share a really exciting PR item that I got that I was going to share in the last live and I completely forgot. So let's get into that. This first thing that I grabbed is a big old tub of the CeraVe moisturizing cream and it came with a small tube of the moisturizing cream. So I'm going to put the small one in my purse and the big one by my shower because that's what I like to put on. I have eczema on my legs and I really like this CeraVe cream, cream because it's really thick, it's very hydrating, very moisturizing and it lasts, but it also soaks in so I don't feel sticky when I use it. I also like the Vanna cream. I just finished a tub of Vanna cream. That'll be in my empties, which will be coming up at the end of this month. I do empties every three months, but not on the quarter. So I do like January, April, July, and October instead of, you know, March, June, that sort of thing. Anyway, so the Vanna cream will be in my empties coming up. And then I probably won't use as much of that heavy, rich moisturizer now that it's coming into spring and summer. The skin's way drier in the uh, fall and winter than it is when it gets warmer. But like I said, that eczema is just kind of there all the time. And when it flares up, heavy cream is really what I need. Then I bought a new uh, CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser because I have almost used all of the one that I have. I think I have the foaming hydrating cleanser, which is really more for dry to normal skin. And this one here, hi, Michelle, that's okay. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for popping in. I'm just going through a little haul that um, I, some things that I picked up. So this one is for normal to oily skin and I'm kind of oily through the T-zone. So that's why I like the foaming one and I prefer a foaming cleanser to a non-foaming one because the non-foaming ones just kind of feel like I'm putting a moisturizer on my face. It's just a, a texture thing, really. I know that they get your skin clean and everything, but and it's really only a second clean or my morning face wash. So my skin is kind of already clean when I use it. But anyway, I like the foaming ones. Um, I'm going to put some stuff on my lips right now because they feel really dry and so I feel like I'm having trouble making words. And once again, I have just noticed that I did not hook up my microphone and I can't decide if I want to do it or if I sound okay the way I am. So Michelle, can you, can you let me know real quick? How does it sound? Do I need to put a microphone on? So says we got seven people in here, but only Michelle has piped up in the comments. If you're here, can you give us a hi or a wave or something like that in the comments so we know who's watching? Um, <clears throat> okay, Michelle, then I'll just leave it the way it is. Oh, good. All right. So then I don't have to try to mess it up by trying to hook up my, <laughs> if I try to hook up a microphone mid midstream, I probably will mess it up. So so, hey everybody, hi Erin. Aging Ophelia, can you tell me your name again? I'm gonna write it down this time so that I can, re or unless you prefer to re be referred to by your, your YouTube name, and that's fine too. Hi Mary. So, um, I also just recently replaced my cleansing balm. I just cleaned out the last, my previous jar of it last night. 
So this one is, thank you, Mary. Okay. Um, anyway, so I have this one. In fact, I've already used it once. I just stuck it back in the jar so I could show it to you guys. This is my absolute favorite cleansing balm. And I've worked out that I use one about every three months. So at $15.99, you know, I use four of these a year. So that, I think that's pretty good. And I just recently redid my cost per ounce on several different cleansing balms. And this one actually did come out still to be the best value per ounce. So that's good. And then I, with my projects that I'm doing, my project pans that I'm doing, I have an out the door in 24 and I have the uh, panning cats and dogs that I'm working on. Oh my goodness, this is really hard to open. Let me see if I can stick something under there. Anyway, I finally used up a toner that I've been working on, seems like forever. And so I bought a new toner and just had fun on Amazon looking for different toners. This one is a Korean skincare and it's Kyung Kang Yul. Here's the focus camera. Nope, it's not going to. Anyway, it is Korean skincare, and this is the Calming Deep Moisture Toner. And I wish that I had actually written down the ingredients that it has in here because all of the box is in Korean, and I can't read that, but um, it has some really good hydrating ingredients in it, but it also has um, AHA and PHA, which is supposed to be a more um, gentle exfoliator. Anyway, so I'm excited to use this. I used it actually today, um, the first time this morning, and it has absolutely no, no fragrance, just smells like water. Um, so if you're sensitive to fragrance, it might be a good one. I will, after the live, I will update the links in the description box with all of the products that I mentioned in case you're interested in checking them out. And then I think that's all that I have that I wanted to share. But the really exciting PR that I got, excuse me while I haul it out of here. Um, and I was going to tell you guys about this in the last live and I completely forgot. So I did a quick uh, live on Instagram stories to, uh, to show it. But I got an LED face mask from Farad Beauty. And they sent this to me. I'm gonna use it for three months, but at the end of the first 30 days, I'm going to do my introduction and you know 30 day update. I didn't figure that there was really much point in making a video if I haven't used it yet. So I'm gonna wait for 30 days, but I did take before, before pictures in natural light and also in my studio lights so we'll do a comparison at the end of 30 days. Right now I'm using this three days a week. And so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I wake up 20 minutes before my alarm, put this on, just kind of doze back off. It's really bright, so it's kind of hard to doze off even with your eyes closed, but I am really enjoying it. I can't, I don't know that I notice anything yet with it, but if I turn it around, you can see the, um, the LEDs and it has the straps to hold it on your head and then it also came with these eye cups that you can put in the mask if you don't if you want to um protect your eyes like if you're going to be walking around with it and not like have your eyes closed then you can put this eye cup on there so when you put it on your face it helps block the light a little bit more. It doesn't block it completely, but it does help block it a little bit more. You can just wipe it off with a, a, a rag because the inside the LEDs are protected by this plastic cover. One thing that I did notice that I kind of wish it had, I wish that it had LEDs here so that you would get some treatment here on your upper lip. Um, because you know it has the mouth cut out, so obviously there's, they're not there. But I think you do get some lighting from it's from the sides and from the nose. I mean, it's not like I mean, I'll show you how bright this is when I in a minute I'll turn it on. So I don't think that not having lights there is that big of a deal. I noticed that like these down here when I have this on my face, 
it kind of hangs over my chin about that much. And so I think that that kind of also helps get my neck. But this morning I turned it on for another five minutes and just kind of laid it on my neck like that so that I could treat my neck as well. Anyway, um, like I said, let me turn this on. You have the remote here and it, it charges through the base here. And then this, you know, is all that you have. So if you want to walk around, you can slip the remote in your pocket or whatever. So you turn this on here and the light comes on. It has red, near infrared, and then it also has blue. Blue light is for acne, especially it's um, an antibacterial and then it has orange. And I believe the orange is for hyperpigmentation, uh, discoloration, that kind of thing. So you have and then, so, and you can do, it has an auto setting where you can do 15, 20, or 30 minutes and it will cycle through the red near infrared, then blue, then orange. Or you can choose to do one color for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes. So anyway, I think it's really, um, it's really comfortable to use. It's not hot, doesn't get hot or anything like that. And it does show you here the battery life remaining. Um, I did not charge it before I first used it. <laughs> And um, so I got three and a half cycles out of it with not charging it, just using it with the charge that it came with. Um, yesterday, this morning, yes, this morning, I only got 11 minutes instead of the full 20. So then I turned it on and did like a, just just kind of kept track of the time on my own just to get the full, the full thing in. So anyway, I'm looking forward to letting you guys know how that works and, um, so far, it's been really easy to use. What we're going to do today, however, is I am going to do a full face of Maybelline makeup. And some of it is stuff I've had forever that I've loved, repurchased. Some of it is new to me in the last little bit. And then some of it I bought just today. So I have my magnifying glass here so that I can read packaging on the stuff that's new. And we're going to start with a primer, the Maybelline Fit Me. I love the Fit Me line, um, but you'll see some other stuff in here from that. And this is the Matte and Poreless, and it's a mattifying primer with sunscreen. I don't know that I noticed that in the store that it has sunscreen. What I noticed in the store was that it has clay, so it's for normal to oily skin. If you have dry skin, you're probably not going to want a primer with clay, but especially going into spring and summer, with oily skin, anything that's going to help mattify me is great. The whole glass skin trend was just not something I wanted to get on board with because I've been battling glass skin my whole life. And to me, it just looks oily and sweaty. And on some people, it's pretty. On me, I don't think it's cute. So that's just me. So we're going with this. This is a broad spectrum SPF 20 and it is chemical sunscreen. So if you have issues with chemical sunscreen, you're not gonna like this, but I actually really don't. So we're gonna get these bangs out of the way. I do not know what this is right here. Um, <laughs> just one of those things that pop up. So this looks like a typical Elmer's glue-ish kind of sunscreen. And so I will just put that on. now. It's four o'clock in the afternoon on a very gray day. So it's not, I don't really need sunscreen right now, but I am interested to see how it plays with makeup, how the makeup sits over it, that sort of thing. So, so what have you guys been up to? It's been two weeks since we got to hang out because last week I was out of, I wasn't at home in the afternoon. It's really hard to do a lot when you're not at home. So what have you guys been doing? I am rehearsing uh, last weekend. I don't even remember what we did last weekend. Oh, no, I don't remember. But I have my daughter's graduation party coming up in a couple weeks. So we've been really busy with cleaning the garage and getting things ready for her party. We're gonna have tables out in the garage, have yard games, that kind of stuff. So keep your fingers crossed, say a prayer for good weather that day, please. I am drinking water. How about you guys? What do you got this afternoon? And for a foundation, I'm going to use this 
Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint. I just got this not very long ago. This is one of them, one of those that I broke my no buy and ventured into low buy territory for because I just really wanted to try it and I didn't want to wait. So I do have a video for that where I tested it and spoiler alert, I really like it. So I'm going to take a dropper and put it onto my palette and see how runny it is. That's probably way more than I'm going to need. Um, and I will put it on with a brush and then use a damp sponge to blend it out. So just going to dab around. Oh, my color, by the way, is 112. Ah, Mary, that sounds fun. Hope you and mom are having a good day. I should have put that primer only on one side of my face. I told myself before I sat down to film, remember to put the primer only on one side of your face. But you know what? I'm over 50 and sometimes I don't remember what I tell myself, even if it was only a few minutes ago. So I will, however, put it on one side of my face so you can see the difference between with and without. I would imagine as you do this YouTube thing, things like doing one side of your face for only becomes more natural, but I've been doing it for like, it'll be three years in June and I still mess that up. So I wouldn't hold my breath on that if I were you. My, it is really dark in here today. Hopefully you guys can, can get an idea of what's happening with my skin. So, all right. The skin tint, I would say, is definitely a light to medium, but you're not going to get a full coverage out of it, and that's okay. That's kind of what you want out of a skin tint, right? So here's the side with the skin tint and the side without. And I think you can see that, like, I've got some, you know, redness, red spots in here and that sort of thing, and it just kind of smooths that over. It also gives just a little bit of a glow. And I, yes, Mary, I think it's a really, really nice finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this on the other side. And we'll see how good it covers that red spot that I've got on my forehead. And it really didn't do bad. I mean, you can still see it's there, but it's taken down the intensity of that redness. So yeah, I think it looks really nice. I'm gonna see what we if we can build. I still got a little bit of redness right there. So let's see if we can just build right through there on both sides of my face. And I already know because I've worn this before, I did wear tests and all that kind of stuff that this is a skin tint that will actually stay on my face. I've tested many, many skin tints. And with my oily skin, I realize most people, a lot of people when they hit their 50s, their skin gets drier and that sort of thing. And skin tints work really well. But if you still have oily skin, a lot of times they're just gonna just melt off your face. One of them that did that was the Wet n Wild Niacinamide skin tint. It looked really pretty on my face when I first started it started the day with it, but it didn't last like four hours before it was just falling apart. So I do think that built up a little bit where I put that without getting cakey. And now I'm just going to take my damp beauty sponge here. This was a set, by the way, that I got from Ipsy. The SL, I think it's SL Miss Glam. It's like, it's a weird, but anyway, it's a trio of sponges and this shape, this kind of diamond shape. I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, so I'm going to just lightly blend. I always make sure that I blend in these corners, in the crevices of my nose, and then I have a crease along here. And makeup likes to sit there. 
Uh, SL Miss Glam, is that the sponge you were asking about, Mary, or the foundation? Let me know. If it was the sponge, it's SL Miss Glam. I got that from Ipsy. The foundation that I am using is the Maybelline Superstay. Hey, Mom, how you doing? Judy's my mom. Everybody say hi to Mom. Um, so this is the 24-hour skin tint. The one that didn't work for me, Mary, was the Wet n' Wild. Okay, so the Wet n' Wild didn't work for me. This is the Niacinamide Skin Tint. And then the one I'm using that I like is the Maybelline Superstay 24-hour Skin Tint, okay? Not that any of us are wearing our makeup for 24 hours, at least not anymore. Our most, well, I don't know, maybe you guys are, but I'm not. All right, let me check in my 10X to make sure I've got these creases. And this is my second face of makeup for the day. I already went to work and I came home and took it off and I wore a tubing mascara so that it would be easier to take off. But some of it kind of got left behind. So there we go. I think I got it. Okay. Now I have quite a bit left on my palette here. That was a full dropper full. Probably only need a half a dropper full um, because I did not use all of that at all. All right. So moving on to... I have a basket of products over here I dug out. I am gonna use the Fit Me Concealer, and I have two shades in this. I have five and, gotta get my magnifying glass because I can't see anything. This one, I don't see the, 10. Okay, so I have five and 10, and I'm somewhere in between them. So I'm going to take a little bit of each and just put it on my palette. Okay, I got a little dab of each, and then I'm going to mix them together. And you need so little concealer, that's too much. I'm gonna wipe that off. And I just went in and grabbed a little bit, and then I'm going to dab it right through here where I have that darkness. And I like mixing, blending, mixing, I like blending it to start with, with my finger, because the heat of your finger kind of helps it to meld in with your skin a little better. I always slip into the habit of using way too much concealer, and then it looks cakey, and then it took just a tiny little bit more to put on this outer corner here, where I also have some darkness. Um, now, I made a an error at the store by not checking something that I should have checked. And I will explain more about that in a minute, but I'm gonna go ahead then and take a brush. And the reason I like doing the brush after I use my fingers, my finger kind of helps spread it around, blend it in, and then the brush is gonna come in and remove excess product. And that helps blend it with the foundation and I really like this, fin the finish of the Maybelline Fit Me is also a lighter finish. So when you're using a skin tint, you don't really want to use a full cover concealer with a skin tint because it's going to look, it's going to look off. You're gonna have all this coverage under your eyes with the full coverage concealer and then a lighter finish on your face. And you're going to see that, you're, it's, it's going to be noticeable. It kind of almost gives a reverse raccoon eye effect. Um, and so, if you're using a lighter weight foundation, make sure you're using a lighter weight concealer as well. If you're using full cover foundation, full cover concealer is just great. But anyway, just a little, a little point there. And then just to blend in these edges with the foundation, just going over it with the same sponge that I used for the foundation. And you can see again, I used, I mean, I just kind of did that. That's how much concealer I used. So be careful that you're not using too much product. If you're seeing a lot of creasing, feeling cakey, heavy, that kind of stuff, you're probably using too much product. And so the first thing to try to fix that would be to back off on how much product you're using. I want to check and see, oh, this, this tubing mascara is kind of everywhere. 
What I like to do when I'm checking my face, I thought I had a puff here, I'll use this one. If I open these creases right here, you can see that there's product settled in them. So what I like to do is use a puff, gently open them, and then just kind of dab the extra product out of those horizontal, well not horizontal, they're vertical, those vertical creases right there. It's kind of like, they're kind of like commas <laughs> all in here. Anyway, that's how I get it out of the creases. All right, we're going to powder and the powder I'm going to use is also in the Maybelline Fit Me line. I love this loose powder. This is in 05 Fair. It's the loose finish, finishing powder. They also have a pressed finishing powder that I have actually never used, but I like to just put a little in the cap. Under my eye, I'm going to use a brush. I'm just gonna dab in, tap off mm. the excess. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't turn off my phone. Dab mm. off the excess. And then I'm going to put on the powder. And I like this powder. I can use it under my eyes. It doesn't look heavy or cakey. Um, and I can also use it all over my face. Now I'm not gonna use any cream products today. So I'm going to go ahead and powder the rest of my face, but I want to use a puff. And this is, eh, that one's not clean. Let me grab a different one. Got three of them sitting here, which one's clean? Okay, so I'm gonna use a puff and just press it in. I like using a puff in the center of my face because that's where I get oily and I can really press it into the creases and it helps me to stay mattified longer through the day. But I also then like using a brush on the perimeter of my face. And you might think that that's like too many steps and that's fine if you just want to use a brush or a puff everywhere, um, you can, but that's how I like to do it. So, all right, so there is my base and I think it looks really nice. Um, it's not heavy or cakey but it's covered what I want to cover and has also let my skin still look like skin. So moving on, let's put some color back in my face. I'm going to use the Maybelline City Bronzer and this is in the shade 100. Um, Mary, I do think especially this skin tint would work on drier skin. And I think I have seen some drier skin people also use the Fit Me Powder. Probably if, with drier skin, I would suggest using it with a brush and just putting on a smaller amount. So like tapping it in and then tap off your brush and go in that way. So you're not putting on too much and drying it out. Um, if you decide to try it, let me let us know like in future comments or something, how you liked it. The nice thing about it is it's really, it is very affordable. And so you're not out a whole lot. Plus you can usually get it at Walmart and you can return things from uh, from Walmart. What kind of issue, Mary? Are you having an issue with it looking dry or elaborate just a little bit on the on the issue you're having with your lip area? So this Maybelline City Bronzer is, it looks really light and it is lighter. So, I mean, obviously I have light skin. So if you have darker skin, you may need a deeper color in it, but I like it because it's kind of hard to get too much and it's also not very orange. So I like using a fluffy brush and then just lightly circling to put that bronzer on. And I'm just working on warming up my skin a little bit. The foundation, powder, concealer, all of that is kind of like a painter preparing their canvas. And what they do is they want to make sure that the canvas is all a uniform color and prepared to accept the paint that they're gonna be putting on it. And so now we are, I had to go, oh, that's right, you talked about, um, we've talked about it. I remember 
Um, I would probably, Barry, tell you to keep all keep your products as much as possible off of that rash until it's more healed because everything is just going to probably accentuate it if you try to put anything over it and it's also going to probably irritate it. So um, yeah, if you have a cream or something like that that you can put on it, you know, I would do that, but I'd try to avoid, mm, yeah, steroids are really hard. Um, but I would probably keep any makeup products off of it until it's healed. So, but I for, I'm sorry that you're still dealing with that. And I hope that you can figure out what's causing it. So this product is new to me. I did not have a Maybelline blush or a Maybelline highlighter. They did have the Master Chrome highlighter at my Walmart, but it was like $9.98. Oh, I was going to tell you the prices on these. I thought I, had my, I thought I grabbed my receipt. All right, you guys, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. You can't leave. Are you still there? <laughs> Did you stick around while I while I ran away? Okay, so the. The primer that I purchased today was $7.48. So that was the primer with the sunscreen. And I don't have the prices on things that have been in my collection for a while because I just they're not they're not here. But this Maybelline face palette. Let's see if I can figure out which one it is. I believe this one was $9.98. So you get, let me open this one. You get a highlighter and three blushes. So that's four products for $10. I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I'm not sure exactly which one of these I want to use, but it's not really going to matter because I got this for my eyes and this eye palette was $9.98. And I thought it was so pretty, but I'm not going to open it. I'm not going to take the tape off because I have to take it back. Maybelline is, they say that they're cruelty free, but they sell in China. And China requires companies who sell there to test on animals. So I'm not sure how you get, although I think that there are new rules because Wet n Wild has recently been able to say that they're cruelty free and they sell in China. Anyway, not exactly sure of all the details on that, but... They're also not vegan, which means that they use Carmine. And I didn't even think about it when I was in the store. I've had this Carmine sensitivity for over a year. You'd think that it would be second nature for me to check the ingredients on an eyeshadow palette. And it's just not. It may contain Carmine. So I'm not going to be able to use the eyeshadow palette and I am going to return it. It's not open. They can resell it. So... Anyway, that means I don't have an eyeshadow. And I was hoping maybe I could use this on my eyes, but it also says may contain carmine. So I think I'm just gonna have to go no makeup makeup look today and not do eyeshadow or just grab a different palette. So you guys vote in the comments. Do you want me to go no eyeshadow or do you want me to pull in another affordable palette? Let me know. Yes. Mary, this blush palette is gorgeous. Let me swatch this for you. Actually, that would be fun. So I'm going to start with the lightest one. And it is really light, but it's super pretty. Wow. And then this one is more pink. That's kind of a Barbie bubblegum pink. And then we have a deeper mauve. Really pretty. And so Mary has the first vote in with no eyeshadow. And then we have the highlighter. It's kind of a pinky highlighter. And it looks really smooth. Let me put it somewhere else because it's really hard to see on my, on my arm. Can you see? Oh yeah, you can. Can you see on my hand? It's just, there's no glitter. It's just a nice glow. So I think... I am going to use, I think I'm going to use the darker one and let's just see what kind of pigment we have there, okay? 
and I'm going to tap a little off on my palette because I don't want to get too much. I'll distribute on both sides. I'm afraid, I was afraid if I just kept going on one side that I would end up with too much. Oh, that is really a pretty color. Wow. Very nice. But very pigmented. So I am going to take that sponge and do some blending because I don't want to have the clown cheeks. <laughs> You're right, in the 80s we would have sculpted using it every shade. Deep on the bottom, then the middle, then the lighter one on the top. Sometimes I kind of feel like Maybelline is a little stuck in the 80s um, with their color base products. Um, I was looking at their eyeshadows and they have these quads that I'm pretty sure they've had since the 80s and I didn't want I didn't buy one of them. I probably could have found one of those that did not have the carmine. But they just looked so dated and honestly Maybelline's eyeshadow is one thing that I've had issues with in the past. I did have the Nudes of New York. I'm going to go into this highlighter now and put that on and see what we get with that. I did have the Nudes of New York, and I do think that that was a fairly good eyeshadow palette, but it was good for Maybelline and not just good, if that makes sense, if you know what I mean there. Um, there are drugstore palettes or affordable palettes that are just good. BH Cosmetics, at least before, Morphe, uh, before Makeup Revolution bought them, um, Moira, Colourpop, and you, um, Elf, the Elf Bite Size, Wet n Wild, their little five pans. So there are good eyeshadows at the drugstore, but Maybelline, I don't feel like is one of them. So I was kind of hoping to try this one. I'd not tried this, this style. Um, the, the Nudes of New York was a bigger palette. And like I said, it was, it was fine, but there were a couple of browns in that one it just did not do well on my skin tone. So I passed that one along when I did my declutter. That highlighter is really pretty, you guys. Really like that. Okay, so I like the blush palette. And by the way, this City Bronzer, I've liked it so much that this is my second one. I completely used one up back in, was it 2022? When I was doing my PUD, which was Project Use Up the Dribs and Drabs completely used one up and then I repurchased it for a video where I talked about products that I love so much I used them up and bought them again and so I'm very happy to have it back in my collection. Where is... there it is. I knew I bought one more thing. Um, yes Mary that was another thing about the nudes of New York is it did not have very good lasting pow power and I feel like that is a problem with L'Oreal. I'm not sorry. Um, CoverGirl and Maybelline, um, maybe L'Oreal, those quads that they all had is they were powdery and dusty and didn't have a whole lot of pigment to start with. And then they just don't last. So the other next thing I got was this Tattoo Studio Brow Tint Pen. And I was intrigued. I, I used the... Mm -hmm. I don't think I have it up here anymore. Yes, I do. The Milani Weekend Brow. It's a, it's a brow pen. And I'm about to have to retire this one. For some reason, it's really, it looks much darker than it did before. And I don't know if I just, my hair was darker and so darker brows worked. But I went to use that the other day and it did not look good on me at all. Now I'm going to have trouble getting into this. I can tell I'm going to destroy this packaging. I wish I had some scissors here, but I can do this. Ah, there we go. Okay. I got it out. Now I got the blonde, so I'm hoping it's not going to be too dark. Um, maybe it did Mary. That's a good, um, because it is really, it is old. I need to get rid of it simply because it's old that's very possible that it oxidized. This is the blonde color, and this is the one that has the three, can you see if my camera will decide to focus on it? It has like a three 
um, peaked brush, or maybe four. Oh, it's four. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm a little uncoordinated here. So the idea is you just do that and it makes hair. So let's see what happens when I do it on my eyes. Uh, somewhere I had a spoolie and it was right here and now it's not. Did one of you guys take it? If you did, you can give it back. I don't know. Um, there's a spoolie on the end of this. I can use it. Okay, so I'm going to brush these guys up. And then... Oh, wow. That's... That's pretty awesome. I have very sparse brows and I have blonde brow hair. So I always have to fill in. I don't have a lot like right here in the front of my brows or at the tail. And that is because of a thyroid issue that I had it's been taken care of, but my brows just kind of never really recovered from it. So, yes, it feels like it's a little dry. I wonder if I shake it. Oh, you know what else I didn't do? Usually I try to wipe out, wipe the foundation out of my brows so that it doesn't get caked on these um, brow pens and I didn't do it. But I really think it's working. Do you guys? And, and I don't feel like like with the Milani with the weekend brow, it was very wet. And so I had to be super careful to just barely touch it. Or I would end up with Mar Groucho Marx brows. This is really kind of interesting. And I think I like it. Because usually I use a pencil and then a brow gel, colored brow gel. Um, because the pencil colors my skin and then the brow gel colors my lashes. And this feels like it's doing both with one product. Um, I don't know if it has much hold, but honestly, I don't need a lot of hold because like I said, I don't have much in the way of brow hairs anyway. So this brow pencil was, I don't know. It just says Maybelline Eye like three times on here. So I think the palette was $11.98. I think this was $9.98. I did have coupons, by the way. Hey, Christine, how you doing? Good to see you. I did have coupons. I had a $2 off a face product and a $3 off an eye product. So I did save some money with coupons if you're shopping um, for drugstore makeup at, at Walmart or Walgreens or CVS or something, make sure you check your coupons. Um, I have this one. I have the Lash, no, Maybelline Expert Wear Ebony Black Eyeliner Pencil. And I'm going to use that because we're not, remember, we're not using any eyeshadow. I think what I'll do since I'm not using eyeshadow is I'm going to put just a little bit of concealer on my eyelids. I'm going to use the darker shade and just put it on both my fingers just to kind of blank out everything that's there. I did have um, a Maybelline Tattoo Studio color in a pot, but it and I looked at that, I was going to use it, but it's completely dried out. Thought about getting one of their shadow sticks, but they're like $7.50 for one color. And I have a whole bunch of shadow sticks that I'm getting ready to declutter because I never use them. So I didn't feel like that would be a very wise purchase. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to tight line with it. And then since we don't have any eyeshadow on, I might try and get a little fancy with the eyeliner. We'll see what happens with that, but 
I'm not actually very good with doing much more than tight lining. So does this have, it does. Okay, on the back end of this, there's a smudger if you just take off this little clip or this little cap, but if you take off both, there's a sharpener. And right now you can see it's pretty blunt. So I am going to sharpen the tip of this. You always feel like I'm going to, oh, it worked. <laughs> I'm so surprised that the sharpener that came with the pencil worked. Hey, Liz, how you doing? So I sharpened it and now I'm going to use my 10X mirror and see if I can get fancy with my eyeliner. So I'm going to just kind of scrub that into the lash line. and also kind of just in between my lashes. And then I'm gonna use the smudger. Just re I forgot that I have. The problem with these sharpeners on the back end of a pencil is then you get all of that pencil shavings in there and it's hard to get out. So I'm gonna use the smudger and soften it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take, I had my brushes out to do make, to do eye makeup with, uh, or to do eyeshadow with, and I'm going to put a little bit of a blob right there and then take an angled liner brush and just do a little lick. I'm just pulling out that shadow that was there and doing a little kitten flick just to help kind of lift that eye light. Now, I have hooded eyes, and so my kitten flick gets kind of lost. So if I have my eye open, I can kind of go over the top of my hood there. Um, all right, now I gotta do the same thing on the other side. That's always the trick, isn't it? So you guys talk amongst yourself while I do this because I can't talk. I'm good to he glad to hear you're hanging in, Liz. Um, you guys, you've had a, a kind of a rough, a rough go. You guys can chat, you know, because it's, it's kind of quiet here with me doing this. Now, my eyes are very crepey, so if you look at that eyeliner, it is not smooth at all, which is what makes this little smudger thing so important and useful because you can just go over and fill in all those crinkles. And again, I'm gonna put just a tiny little bit more right here at the outer corner and grab my Oh my gosh, yes, my eyes pitch. One is more hooded than the other and they're not the same angle. So doing a wing is just almost impossible. But if I do this little flick maneuver, where I just kind of pull out the color. So it's just kind of the indication of a wing and not a full on wing per se, then I think it works better. And then, like I said, if I open my eye and actually go over the fold, see how that fold is right there? If I just kind of do a little over it, then that helps. For me, if I do, if I like close my eyes and do this whole wing thing, when I open my eye, I end up with a Nike swoosh because the hood drops and it's it's a mess. So this, <laughs> this works for me if I want just a tiny little flick. But you can see right here where that where that saggy skin is, I just kind of try to lightly go over the top of it. Hey, Lori, how are you? Good to see you. Okay, I have two, that would be four. I have two different mascaras. 
but they're not completely different. I have two versions of the Sky High or the Lash Sensational Mascara. So the Sky High, I've had, I love it. I use it a lot. Some people say it's a tubing mascara. I don't think it's a tubing mascara, at least for me. It does not remove like a tubing mascara. It doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge. I get good coverage with it, but it does not just wipe off with warm water like the Thrive does or like the e.l.f. lash extender does. Comes off easily with my, um, my cleansing balm, so it's not hard to remove, but it's not a tubing mascara. So this one, the lash, this is the original Lash Sensational, and it has more of a curved brush, whereas this one has that traditional Christmas tree brush that the Thrive and the Lash Extender have. So I'm going to put one on one eye and one on the other. I have them both in um, Black is Black, and the traditional one says, Full Fan Effect Layers of Lashes Revealed. This one also says it is a washable mascara. Um, doesn't say anything about washing it though. It just says it's a washable mascara. So um, whatever that means. All right, I'm gonna use my e.l.f. eyelash curler and curl my lashes. If you are kind of came in a little late, the reason I do not have any eyeshadow on is because I bought a palette at the store this afternoon. I was really excited to use it. And then when I got home and I was doing some research on Maybelline, realized they're not vegan and thought, oh, I probably should have checked the ingredients. And they can it contains carmine, so I can't use it. All right, so we're gonna put the, I'm gonna put the Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational on my left eye. And we'll see what we get. And also on the lower. I feel like this mascara goes on quickly and builds up quickly. It's kind of a wet formula, so I do have to be careful or I will get it all over my eyelids um, because I do kind of have longer lashes. And if I'm not careful, I'll end up looking down and my eyelid, my lashes tips will touch the brow bone. I don't know if it's that I have longer lashes or if I have a protruding brow bone, maybe a combination of both. but I almost always have mascara dots to clean up after I put my mascara on. So normally I do one eye, a coat, and then the other eye, and then come back. So this one ha actually hasn't dried, maybe like it normally does. And so it's kind of wanting to get a little clumpy, but I don't usually have trouble with that. So there is the Lash Sensational. I'm not sure how to sh best show you the lashes. Maybe I need to look up. And I just felt some touch. So I, I don't think it got on them though. All right. Now on the other eye, we're going to, I'm going to use the traditional lash, sensa lash sensational. And this one has the curved wand, which if you need help with curling your lashes, sometimes a curved wand can help. And I, the mascara will kind of gather in the bottom of the curve. So if you want to use that side to get it on them, sometimes that's helpful. And then use the side to separate. I feel like this brush is doing a better job separating the lashes. What do you guys think? They're definitely more fanned out. And it felt a little easier to put it on the bottom lashes without it getting clumpy. So let's go in for coat number two. I think I'm getting more volume. 
and the lashes are staying separate, but I don't think I'm getting the length. I'm going to try to focus on the tips of the lashes and see if I can build up the tips. This is interesting. I did not expect there to be so much difference, but can you guys see how different that looks? Let me see if I can. Can you see how much more fanned out and individual the lashes look on that side versus over here? They're a little clumpier. And I feel like I have more length over here. Yeah, I feel like this side's more, more is longer. And I don't really see the tips quite as defined over here, but there's more volume at the base. Wow, that was that was interesting. I did not expect that. I'm gonna see if I can focus just right on the tips of the lashes. Because if I can build up the length. I actually might like the the original Lash Sensational better than the Sky High. The Sky High was kind of a second chance product. I used it once a long time ago, several years ago, and I didn't really like it. And I don't know what made me buy it again, but maybe just a glutton for punishment. I don't know. But I tried it again and I really like, okay, I think... I think I was able to build this one up on the for the length. What do you guys think? Vote in the comments. Sky high or traditional? Let me know which one you think looks better. Okay, I'm gonna take my bangs down because now we just have lips to do, and I can get my my five head out of out of view. Stop blinding you guys with the, the shine from it. You you do know what a five head is, right? A forehead is <laughs> is here and the five head you can get all five fingers between your brow and your hairline so yeah I've got a five head not a forehead um this is my right eye Mary is that the one you're talking about or are you talking about for your right my right or your right traditional on the on my right sky high on my left the wedding ring side do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put some lips on. I have, I forgot to get, a, okay, so you like the traditional one and Mary liked the sky high. I'm not sure on it. Oh, I do have, I do have mascara dots. Oh, gone it. Okay, before I do lips, let me fix that. One thing about, it is easier to clean up mascara when you don't have any eyeshadows on, any eyeshadow on. If you let it dry, typically you can just kind of flick it away. So I made more of a mess with the traditional one than I did with the Sky High. But I also feel like with the Sky High, it kind of dropped the curl. It's dry enough now, however, that I can kind of just use my finger to curl it back up. So I feel like maybe I feel like maybe the, the sky high is a little heavier. Um, so the, the curl has dropped. Lip products. I forgot to get a lip liner. But it, so I think that that is going to determine which product I want to use. I have two of the Maybelline lipsticks that I absolutely love. One of my very favorite of all times lip, lipsticks is the Rosy Risk. Love this lipstick. It is just a perfect for me, my lips but better, everyday pinky nude color. Absolutely love it. That and then... Pink Rose, this is just their regular cream bullet formula. Pink Rose is a really good one if I want something just a bit more pink, but not over the top pink. And for a bullet, these have pretty good lasting power. They're not gonna last all day. Then if you eat, they're probably gonna come off, but just for putting it on and then going through your day, if you're not eating or drinking, they're gonna stick around. For a really good long time. But 
I also really love the Superstay ink crayons. And um, yeah, these are more of a liquid lip formula. They're not liquid, but they're a longer lasting formula, but I don't feel like they dry my lips out and give me desert lips. So to go with this kind of mauve-y, as you can see, I have five of them. I'm gonna pull out the brown ones because I don't wanna use one of those today. That's not, not going to go well. And I have, let's, let's swatch these two. And you guys can weigh in on what you think. They do have a sharpener on the back. And so if you want to line with them, you can sharpen it. And I'm going to do that since I didn't get a lip liner. The first one I have is, oh darn it, they are so tiny. Hang on while I get out my magnifying glass. This one is Stay Exceptional. Okay. And then the next one is Seek Adventure. So should I stay exceptional or seek adventure? What do you think? I'm kind of thinking, hmm, well, with my scarf, I'm kind of thinking I should stay exceptional. So let's do that one. Oh, well, you guys, you guys both said adventure. So, okay. Let's go with adventure. Why not? I can, I can be persuaded. I am going to sharpen it. I, this, I think this is probably the first time I've ever used one of these sharpeners on these things, you guys. But I really want to try it. Because I'm going to line with it. And get it just a little sharper. The problem, like I said, when you do this, is now you have all of this stuff that you have to do something with. <laughs> it wasn't that big a deal. I might be a little dramatic. It just wiped off. Okay, so now I have a nice tip on my pencil, and I'm going to line with it first. And that did a really nice job lining. And then I'm going to fill in. And like I said, it's really comfortable. It does not feel like it's just going to dry out your lips. And normally what I would do is let this dry down. I would go, you know, use the restroom, comb my hair, put on my perfume, that kind of thing. And then I would put a gloss over it, but I'm not gonna make you sit around and wait for a couple minutes while I let my lipstick dry down. I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of my lifter glosses. I have two of them. This one is in stone and I use this with my brown nude, brownish kind of shades. And then this one is in Moon, and I use this one with my pinks and mauves. And really, these two are the only two I've felt like I've ever needed. I've gone and I've looked at the display to see if I wanted to buy more of these, and I didn't see a shade that I thought would do anything that these two don't already do. So if you just want to, I these are these pretty much are universal. So you can do this one, like I said, with the these three that I didn't use. I use Moon over, and I would use this over either one of these. Sometimes I put it over Rosy Risk. I mean, it just, it just does it. So, and this is, by the way, is my second one of these. I did completely use up one. And this, I'm just gonna put right in the center. They smell so good. Smells like, smells like cake, like birthday cake, yeah. Smells so good. They're not sticky. Um, they, it will kind of reduce the wear time of the of the lipstick a little bit. But like I said, if I let it dry down first and then put it on, it's imperceptible the 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 change in the wear time. And I just like 
the little, I'm a gloss girl. I love wearing a gloss. If you don't like gloss, you could have just stopped, but I love wearing a gloss. And so this is my full face minus the eyeshadow of Maybelline. And um, yeah, I don't know. I would have to be really careful if I bought even just a quad of the Maybelline because I have a feeling that their ingredient list is more generic and not shade specific. And so it's probably all going to say may contain carmine. And my eyes itch and water and burn and it is so unpleasant to actually use a product with carmine in it that I'm not going to risk it. So that is my Maybelline. What do you guys think? I think it turned out pretty. I really, really like the blush. Um, so I don't think that there's anything that I didn't like. I was really excited about this brow product and Oh, thank you, Mary. Um, it's always surprising to me when I decide like not to put eyeshadow on that I kind of like it too. I mean, I love eyeshadow. Don't get me wrong. Love eyeshadow. And I had on earlier today, um, the Sydney Grace Blessed palette. And I'm working on that in my project pan, catting by the project cat. What is it called? Panning cats and dogs. That's it. <laughs> and I'm doing that one, no shade left behind also with five uses. So this was my fourth time using it. So I didn't have a whole lot of shades left in it. And so I had to use some of the shades that I've kind of stayed away from and ended up really liking my look. So I, when I do my palette wrap up for April at the beginning of May, you guys will have to tune in and see what I did with the blessed palette with the shades that I don't usually use very often. Anyway, I am going to, it's, we've been here for over an hour and I, Thank you all so much for showing up and hanging out with me. I love these Wednesday videos because it's just, it feels so much more natural and relatable. And because you're there and in the comments, I feel like I'm talking to you and not just talking to this camera and just feel so much more comfortable. Anyway, if you have things that you would like me to discuss during our lives, please let me know in the comments. And I would love to do that in a future live and, um, yeah, so you guys can kind of set the set the agenda for what we talk about because, you know, I can come on here and talk to you, but if you too, Lori, I'm glad you showed up. But if I can talk about what you want to, then um, that's even more fun. So I will see you guys in my next video. Well, you'll see me. I won't get to see you. I'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Have a beautiful, blessed day.